down to business. Today I'm talking with an extraordinary entrepreneur who is focused on wellness and helping out in society. She has a very big portfolio at her young age and I thought that it's important for us to sit down with her and hear her story, what her goals are, how her journey has been and what she'd like to share with us. So yeah, I her, she has a very long and very beautiful name so I want I won't even dare to pronounce it. She will do it herself. Ladies and gentlemen, here is. Hi, my name is Alina Lee Mtongirai Kundirai Muya Mtsonda Nankamba Karimong Sama and most recently Dawson. I am a 24 year old entrepreneur, but I'm also currently working for the Queen's Commonwealth Trust and a few other companies. I own a business here in Zambia that I serve as managing director for called the Women's Wellness Spa, formerly known as Wellness in Zambia, and Bonavita Limited, which is a media and communication production house company, and another design and communications company as well. And I serve as the CEO on the board of, um, on the advisory board for an organization I founded called the Women's Economic Empowerment Project Zambia. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a very big portfolio. Congratulations. Thank you. And by the way, you look gorgeous. Thank you. I tried a little bit for you. You should have seen me really, before. No, we didn't do the efforts <laughs> effortlessly. So let me get started. Let, let us get down to business. So mm -hmm. what made you want to become a, uh, an, entrepreneur an entrepreneur at such a young age? Um, my father was an entrepreneur. My mother and father, when they were married, they were both entrepreneurs. I think it's something I was exposed to very early in life. And there's a certain discipline and innovation that comes with not having a lot or everything during childhood. So childhood was very rough. Uh, I was raised by a single struggling parent who had to take care of me, siblings, extended family. You know how it is being an African woman. And so, you know, I guess when you don't have everything and everything is given to you, you're not like spoiled you become innovative and creative and it's like i would always look at my friends with dolls or my doll and be like i bet if i can make clothes for these dolls and sell them to my friends they would buy and if my mom or aunts or relatives came over and they spoiled us with like sweets for me and my siblings i'd always take some to school and try to sell them off even when there was no need to i've just always had i think an entrepreneurial spirit that i inherited from my mother and father it's not like you are born an entrepreneur, no. You can be born with the spirit. It's still something you need to harness. It's still something you need to, you know, manage. It's something that you need to pan beat yourself into becoming an entrepreneur. You need to understand your business model canvas. You need to understand why you're creating this product. Is it solving any challenges existing or new? Um, is it innovative? Is it something that's already on the market and you're rethinking it? Uh, what are your profit margins looking like? What are the other revenue streams coming from? So I was born with an entrepreneurial spirit, but I definitely developed a passion for entrepreneurism. And I always liked the idea of working for myself and paying myself um, rather than working for someone else and being paid what they think I'm worth. I like to, it was, it was a good selling point for me. Okay, wow. Now you have not told us what age did you start? Ah, the real entrepreneurism or like the selling of the candy? No, the real entrepreneur. I think I was about 16 in, well, technically 14. We had a trip to, to South Africa, my mother, my sister and I, and my sister was buying clothes and this and that. And my mom was buying her makeup and jewelry and handbags. And I was buying like chocolates that you don't find back home to bring back home and jewelry to sell to my friends so that was the, my I guess my capital in that sense was given to me by my mother knowingly and then when I was 16 um, I had a lot of friends from different schools mm -hmm. and my school we didn't have a prom but some of my friends went to the international schools where they had prom and I knew that for prom you have to get your nails makeup and hair done and I knew quite a few women from the local communities that were able to do nails hair and I could do makeup really well so I taught them how to do makeup as well and I started a business which offers mobile beauty services. It was called Aphrodite Beauty. After was this in Zambia? This was in Zambia. Oh, okay. This was in Zambia. Okay. And that was my first real time, I guess, as 
an employer, but not really because it was a lot of collaboration. Okay. I, I would say my first proper business capital was the network of people that I had built. Okay. It wasn't in cash. And there's a big misunderstanding when you're young and you're an entrepreneur that your capital needs to be 30,000 kwacha, 300,000 kwacha, 1 million. It's your resources. You start with what you have and you do the best with what you can. Okay. So it's important to build your network because then you know a bunch of people that, for instance, for my cooking show, I make quite a bit. So then, you know, and it started with, okay, initially I don't have the money to fund this or pay this person. Who do I know? I know somebody that owns a media company. I know this person that does editing. I know this person that does graphics. I know this and this and this. So it's let me build a team of these people, these creators that I know are brilliant in their work and execution. Let me speak to them and pitch to them what I intend to do. We're all taking a risk, but I'm 100% sure that this risk will you know, have a lot of benefits to solve. And that's how you start with your network can be your capital. Um, you yourself can be your starting capital. You offer your services to someone, get paid for them use that money to plunge into another business idea eventually. Okay, so the, the, business, the business model you just explained, um, do you reckon it is for or across borders in terms of business or maybe specific kind of businesses? But there are certain businesses where you do actually need mm -hmm. money, right? And then some of them, as you've mentioned, like service-based. If you're one person, you offer the services, then you can start up with that, right? So with that said, what makes you think, what what holds back our Zambian young entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs into starting or utilizing their services? I think for young entrepreneurs, number one, um, it's the lack of resources, of course, capital, money, we can never run away from that. Yeah. But often it's also just the lack of information. Um, you want to start a business for the sake of starting a business. You want to start a business reselling lipstick and this and this and this. And I think that's a business person. Um, is, oh, I will resell this, but if you want to become an entrepreneur, you need to think a little bit more in depth of what is my business model going to look like? What am I offering? What is my unique selling point to the customer? Why am I doing this? The why will push you even in the first few weeks or months where you're yeah. not making money back, maybe you're not breaking even. Um, so you need your training. What kind of business am I doing? You need Training just comes from experience. So maybe offer to intern or offer your services for free, like pro bono at a company or already existing business, whether it's SME or startup that does what you're wanting to offer, learn from them and then go on and say, okay, this is what I found works for them. I didn't like how this works. I think this can be done better. You think through that on your own, do a lot of research and then do your launch. You do your pre-launch, which is like a soft launch, just testing it out on the market, yeah. getting real feedback from people. And then do your proper like hard launch now. It's like this is our official launch. I've launched this business. And I'll stop there. Always look for investment or grants. If you're a young person and you have an entrepreneur, number one, make sure you're registered, you're paying your taxes, all those get all those legal issues out of the way. Yeah. It doesn't mean immediately you start, you know. Sometimes it's like this is just a small business. I'm not making enough yet to register it with this and this. Yeah. But know that it's important for you to have it registered, for you to be a registered taxpayer, tip in, identification, all that stuff. And then you can start looking for grants and investment. There's so many opportunities that you can find where large corporations, organizations want to invest in young upcoming entrepreneurs because they understand the value that young people play in economic growth, especially for Zambia. We've had our challenges with the economy. It's been pretty, I want to say safe word, um, bad. <laughs> it was bad. But off camera, that's not the word I would use to describe yeah. it with you. And so I think just be prepared. It's about preparation, making sure you're prepared for the opportunities, making sure you're prepared if something goes bad, if a client isn't happy with your service or product, what will you do? How will you fix that? And have a contingency plan in place. And also a lot of people say, never give up on one thing. Try, try, and try again. Sometimes it's okay to move on, okay? It's, it's entirely up to the entrepreneur and person. If you feel like this isn't for me anymore, I'm not as passionate about it. I really feel like this is my new passion. This is where I wanna go. I tried this, it didn't work out, but I think it can really work out here. Then go ahead and try that out. But not when it's like, I tried to sell to one person, they didn't buy from so giving up, no. No, when you feel like it's not for me anymore, I'm ready to move on. Then you move on to the next venture or idea. Don't be afraid to. Yeah, because you're one of the first people who started the 
period poverty in Uganda, right? With the NGO. What else do you guys? So we tackle sexual and reproductive health rights. Mm -hmm. um, in the areas that we work in, and one of the areas we opened the youth hub in, there was a lady that used to perform illegal abortion for like 20 kacha with a hand wire. Wow. Okay, and she didn't know what she was hooking out. A lot of the time, the girls would bleed to death. And we went in and we gave her a job as an educator at our youth hub to say, when the girls come to you, tell them to come to us. And because we knew we were taking away business from her, that was her concern as well. Like, well, how will I also survive? I will have a family to feed. So we gave her a job as a sex, as a uh, SRHR educator, which is sexual and reproductive health rights educator at our youth hub. And then the girls would go to her and say they need a good service. They would come to us and we'd educate them on what their rights are. In Zambia, you have the right to a legal abortion, a safe and legal abortion. You do not have to go through nearly bleeding to death or having your uterus taken out and not having a child in the future because you made legal rape and you got pregnant or you made a stupid decision as a young person and ended up pregnant. We teach them about abstinence. We provide contraceptives to women in the community, not just, you know, condoms. Also just different contraceptive methods and pills educate them on that. We have lots of numerous drop-in centers across the country, on the square, in Hombe, Chivalia, um, in Katiwe, in Dola, Kipwe, and now we're branching to Mpika, where girls can drop in every day and have access to free menstrual aids, um, whether it's sanitary pads, disposable, reusable, or most recently we introduced the menstrual cups, which come in three different sizes. We have funding opportunities for young mothers or just young people and women in general that are um, very entrepreneur focused and centered, but to have access to those funding opportunities, we need to have gone through our social entrepreneur leadership course. There's a difference between an entrepreneur and a social entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, I'm, I'm in it for the profit, for the money, for, my, for myself. I want to make money. And a social entrepreneur, you're in it for all those things, but your business is addressing a social challenge or need within your community, area, country, or nation. And so we teach those courses that are modeled by ALA. And it's one of the programs is called Building a Box. And then there's also our scholarship programs where we put some students up there, high performing an academic on scholarship from grade, let's say seven to 12, and sometimes we pay for the first semester of college, but the parents have to pay back that money. And that money goes back into a pool that's used to pay for the next person that we need. So that's how sleep works. That's part of our structure, and that's why sleep was born. So, Alina, we are going to start, first of all, before I, Alina takes a bite of this, hopefully. Oh. We're going to do a game called Chili Bite, right? So here are these wonderful Zambian big, big cucumbers. And then on top of that, I just chopped out some fresh <laughs> peppers. No, piri piri. What? Chilies on top. So piri piri. Al exactly. So Alina has to answer some of these questions, right? If she gets them wrong, she has to eat a cucumber with a fresh chili on top. So the first question is going to be who was Zambia's fourth president and what was his middle name okay. no counting no wait, counting wait, in wait. five seconds we have one we two have three Rupia Banda. four five Rupia Banda. yeah his middle name where's my name okay <laughs> wait no it's only fair that if I get it correct yeah you take a bite if I get it wrong I no, 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 no. I have Alson, so I cannot eat chili, unfortunately. I've seen you eat chili on your page. <laughs> no, I've never eaten chili. I'm not that strong person. Like, I've always wondered, like, why did you Why did you chili? assume I was because a strong person? you're a Bemba woman. You're strong. You know, you're from the northern province. <laughs> You guys wrestle with crocodiles and do. yeah, you see all these <laughs> all these stories I've heard. So I know you guys are strong. Yo. Huh? Okay. And then the next one's going to be it's a very popular Kalindula song. The name of it is Aliowele, right? So it goes like, please forgive my singing voice. Aliowele amune wangu, aliowele. Who? Finish the song, finish the song. Word. Aliowele amune wangu, aliowele. Kuyumba. Yes, what? well done. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you got it right. You got it right. I thought you get you get that one wrong. Okay. I guess. Yeah, perfect. So the next one would be mm, yes. Okay, in cooking we have um, what's the mixture? What's the name of it in French? Uh, the cuttings of different vegetables we use to season the. Say we're making uh, stock. 
You mean like missing place? No. That's preparation. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by cutting up? So you have, in, if we're making a stock, we made um, bouquet gani. Mm -hmm. But then other than a bouquet gani, there's another thing that we call to spice up, not to flavor, to season the stock. So it doesn't it just doesn't taste like water and and um, I feel like I want to answer, but I feel like I'm not understanding the question fully. Okay, so when we're making stock, it could yeah. be like chicken stock, vegetable yeah. stock, right? Bones? Like you use bones for broth? Yeah, that's one. But then it's not the vegetables that we use. There's a mixture of vegetables we use, and we call it a specific name in French. Ooh. One. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Ah, ça! My sister in Christ and in Bemba, my fellow Bemba What woman. is it? You have to tell me what it Mira is. Mira Poire. Mm -mm, I wouldn't have guessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mira Poire. Does it mean like trying to move like such a... I know, but then the good thing is I've smeared it all over the cucumber. The moment of truth. Is she going to do it? I added a bit of salt because it's mm. going to be a damn game. So we got to be like... Mm -hmm. When is Beyonce's birthday? Fourth of September. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right now. Okay. All right. One last thing to say for um, would-be entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, every entrepreneur or business person or an employee of a business. As we are headed into the new year or the past two years, summarize everything that you like them to know and then, yeah, give them a shout out. I mean, we're getting to the close of a year. Yeah. And some of us set plans in the beginning of the year we weren't able to achieve or do. But there's still time. There's still like over a month left before the year ends. So whatever your goals were, you can still smash them. You can still get on top of things. Even if it's not at the capacity that you had hoped to do, don't let yourself down. Don't disappoint yourself. Most importantly, don't fall back on your dreams and aspirations. Kill it. Do the best with what you can and if you're an aspiring entrepreneur i would say start now you don't have the money you don't have the clients you don't have the network start now because if you fail and you will fail you learn faster and it takes you to the next step that you need to get to that's all all right ladies and gentlemen you've heard that thank you so much this has been down to business and i'm hoping that you have learned how to get down to business with alina bye hey dora